This episode is sponsored by Aura, the smart, simple way to stay safe online. At least, you know, when we first started working on the select committee, we kind of looked at the 9-11 commission as the gold standard of sort of an example of what we were trying to do. Credible, nonpartisan accounting of what occurred. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. Hello and welcome back to all of you. I may be shadow banned, but that's not going to stop me. So make sure to keep checking back for new content. Even if you don't get my notifications, which you probably won't. If you're anything like me and you're sick of the Democrat state media comparing anyone and anything they don't like to the Nazis and Hitler, then I have a totally refreshing new take on Donald Trump from the threats to democracy over at MSNBC. You just have to see it for yourself. But first, let me quickly tell you about another threat that you can actually do something about. Your chances of falling victim to online crime are are one in four. If you're watching this, chances are you're nodding your head right now because you've been a victim. I'll post a link to this study in the description, but basically, researchers first identified hundreds of US-based data brokers' websites, legally advertising the sale of, quote, military and veterans' personal info. Yes, really. The findings were disturbing. These US-based data brokers sold the researchers everything about these veterans, including medical information and geolocation data. Yes, really. So what's my point. You're not a veteran and you have nothing to worry about, right? Foreign organizations are targeting more than just servicemen. They're targeting everyday people like you and me. And that's where Aura comes in. It's an all-in-one digital safety tool that identifies these brokers selling your info and submits opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do. Let Aura handle that for you. And in case you're wondering, yes, Aura is a US-based company with a hundred percent US based customer support staff that's available 24 7 and Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats that you can't see Aura also offers credit and identity monitoring antivirus VPN password management comprehensive parental controls and more you get everything at one affordable price and the peace of mind of knowing that plans include one million dollars of identity theft insurance for each adult up to five adults in a family plan go to aura.com forward slash drone tech and get your first 14 days free this is a product i trust and you can find that link in the description and pinned comment Tim, let's start with you. Jack Smith takes issue with what he calls Trump's habit of blaming other people for what happened on January 6th. I want to read just a little bit more for you from the filing. Quote, the defendant has signaled his intention to blame the events of January 6th on the Capitol Police, National Guard, and the district's mayor. Courts in this district have overwhelmingly rejected attempts by other January 6th defendants to shift the blame to law enforcement. And as a legal matter, the alleged shortcomings of law enforcement do not sanction the defendant's criminal conduct. A bank robber cannot defend himself by blaming the bank's security guard for failing to stop him. A fraud defendant cannot claim to the jury that his victim should have known better than to fall for his scheme. And the defendant cannot argue that law enforcement should have prevented the violence he caused and obstruction he intended. Whew. Wow. If you were looking for any more signs that our country is on track to a one-party authoritarian state, take a big old whiff of that. First of all, Donald Trump never told anybody to storm the Capitol or attack the Capitol or anything like that. In fact, the only person who did that was Ray Epps. But these people defend that guy and treat him as if he's a victim of a conspiracy theory. Let's face it, if he's the guy that incited around 300 people, then you can't blame Donald Trump. That's because Donald Trump told people to march peacefully and make your voices heard. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically, to peacefully and patriotically, to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. And when Donald Trump posted a video on Twitter telling people to stop, Twitter took the video down and banned him. As I pointed out in other videos, over 120,000 people marched peacefully. It was only a relatively small amount of people that actually got into fights with police. And what did we learn from years worth of Democrat riots? That the media calls these sorts of things mostly peaceful. It literally was. We're talking around 300 people compared to over 120,000. <laughs> 
that's true. The other 1,000 or so that ended up being charged were just peacefully on Capitol grounds, then had the book thrown at them. Well, everybody except for the guy that actually told people to storm the Capitol, Ray Epps. And again, I have to emphasize, if Ray Epps is the guy that did this, well, then he would be to blame. And then you got to start asking why the media and the Democrats and the government didn't want to have anything to do with him. Second, there are many legitimate questions about what actually led up to the events of January 6th. And the powers that be don't want any of that taken legitimately, especially in a court. Why, you may ask? Well, the Capitol Police chief himself thought the whole thing was a setup. They wanted this to happen so they could use it for propaganda just like they're doing now and influence the outcome of the 2024 election. And they don't want any evidence of that given any sort of legitimacy. Look, there's no shifting blame. They're blaming Trump and Trump is defending himself. That's how this works. But these wannabe authoritarians want this to be a commie clown court where Donald Trump is just guilty by default. Tr Trump trying to shift blame for January 6th, something the January 6th committee itself grappled with. Your reaction to this filing? Yeah, Alicia, you know, when we first started working on the select committee, we kind of looked at the 9-11 commission as the gold standard of sort of an example of what we were trying to do. Credible, nonpartisan accounting of what occurred. Mm -hmm. That committee was brazenly partisan, filled with hypocritical election-denying Democrats and a couple of Trump-hating Republicans that both lost their respective elections. Just like everything else going on right now, it looks more like something you see happening in North Korea or the Soviet Union, and not a credible committee. In respect, with respect to 9-11, the commission found that there were failures of U.S. intelligence that perhaps should have been more acutely aware of the threat posed by Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. But that did not absolve Osama bin Laden and his conspirators from flying planes into the World Trade Center. Very similarly here, we... Mm -hmm. No, no, my God. There is absolutely nothing similar between 9-11 and a protest that happened at the Capitol. Found that sure, there were failings of law enforcement to share information, to operationalize the intelligence they had about the prospect of violence. None of that absolves the proximate cause of the attack on the Capitol, which was President Trump and his co-conspirators. Mm -hmm. So we have heard this attempt to shift blame. Uh, our committee found that, that, that it did not succeed, that the only reason we had a riot at the Capitol was because of the, that was the final prong of a multi-step intentional plan to disrupt a joint session and prevent the transfer of power. Ooh, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. They've actually done nothing to prove that Trump had anything to do with the relative handful of people that got violent at that protest. And if we're going to hold Trump to that standard, what does that mean for the Democrats and the media who spread outright lies after police shootings, causing riots, death, and destruction? Of course they won't be held to that standard. That's how this works. That's what it's like in a communist authoritarian state. As far as these failings by the cops and the government, it's becoming more and more clear that it was done on purpose. You can't be part of the scheme then investigate yourselves and found you did nothing wrong that's what this trial is supposed to be for but they don't want that they want some kind of monstrosity straight out of the book 1984 that's the entire point of this sham trial which is clearly being run by people just like this guy who are so blinded by their hatred for donald trump that they're willing to walk this country right into the abyss all right, folks, that's all I can take for now. But if you're still watching after this long, please go ahead and hit that like button and make sure to keep checking back for more. See you all on the next one.